Hello, I'm going to show you how to go from a quote to an invoice in just one click. But first of all, we need to set everything up. So open up a new spreadsheet. We're going to go to File, New, from Template Gallery. So these are Google's templates. We're going to scroll down until we get to work and we're going to use an invoice. So we're going to start with the invoice rather than the quote just because I think it's easier. And then what we can do is we can update all of our company details. So put in your company name, put in your company address, um, maybe your VAT number, anything that you want on the top of every quote. Get rid of this submitted from. Change this invoice number to be an internal reference. And this will be a quote number. Yeah, and then we're going to change this to today's date instead of having something that you have to type in here. If you just type in today, then you will have the date of today and this will be automatically updated. You can change the format of that date, format, number, and then this is my preferred format. So you don't get confused about whether this is US or, or European dates. Let's add in a logo as well. Okay, insert image, insert image over sales. And I'm going to insert my B logo. Make it a little bit smaller. Lovely. And then if we do control print, we want this current sheet to be portrait. Here is our invoice. And our quote will look a little bit like this. Control P. The next thing we need to do is build our database, which is going to hold the information that we're going to fill in the, into the dynamic fields. So these are going to be dynamic because who we're going to invoice, whether it's a quote or an invoice, is going to come from our database. Everything apart from our internal reference, which is going to be the reference we're going to use to select which invoice or quote that we want to do. So we're going to create a database now. Rename this database. So you don't have to see me type. I'm going to copy in. Here's one I made earlier. Right, here we've added in an internal reference number, the customer name, the address, one address to postcode and customer email. These are things that are going to be the same, whether it's an invoice or whether it's a quote. We are then going to have a status column, which will help us determine whether it's a quote or an invoice. I'm going to do this status column is going to be a drop down. I'm going to highlight that whole column here. Scroll all the way back up to the top. And I'm going to go to data, data validation, and my options are going to be, I'm going to have a drop down, but I want it to be either a quote, my job's going to be in progress, or it's going to be an invoice, or it's going to be paid. So we can now have the first couple of, couple as quotes, another couple in progress, another couple invoiced, and a couple paid. Probably the wrong way around, but the early ones are more likely to be them paid. But that's fine, let's open that up. In the in here, you can do some advanced options. You can show a warning rather than reject the input. You can have a chip, an arrow, or plain text. I think chip is quite a nice one here because you want it to be really obvious that this is something that, that you want to change. And we don't want them to be able to put anything else other than what we've got in here so reject the input you can always add more items if these don't include every stage of your project for instance you might have things on order okay that's done next we want our invoice or quote to update based off our internal reference number so let's put in an internal reference number in here so let's copy this and paste this into here if you notice, I copied it into the formula bar rather than copying the whole cell, otherwise it copies the formatting as well. Okay, so this is our internal reference. I'm going to go through this quite quickly because if you want to know how to automate all of these bits, you can watch the how to automate your invoicing video. First thing I want to do is table two isn't actually going to change, so I'm going to change this to blue field analysis. But my invoice four will change depending on my reference, whether my reference is one or reference is two. 
The formula I'm going to put in here is going to be an index match formula. So what this does is this create, we say, an index. We're going to tell you which row I want out of my customer name. This is the column that I want to index. So I want you to index that. And then I'm going to tell you which value I want. So if I go for the first value, it's going to be customer name. I don't want the first value. I want whatever row number this one's in. So this row, ref 1001, is in row 2. So I want to find where that is. So I want to match. I want to match reference 1001 in this column here in column A. And then what we need to do is a comma zero to make sure it's an exact match and finish your brackets. So this is my invoice for Mr. Boss. Next, we want our address one, then our address two, then our postcode. So all that's going to change, we're going to keep the reference is always going to be in column A, but our columns are going to change wherever we're looking. Address one will be column C, address two, D, postcode E. We're now going to fix the columns that will never change. So our match part will never change. We're always going to be matching our internal reference. And it's, our internal references are always in column A. So function F4 to fix these and they won't change. Our column that we're looking up though will change. So here we're looking at B. But for address line one, we want C. For address line two, D. And then our postcode was E. And now when we update our internal reference, we are updating our address to be the address for the different references. Payable two is staying the same. Our date is already dynamic. So tomorrow, this date will change. The only other thing that we want to change is our quote number. Our quote number is currently in column H. So if we copy all of this, put this in here, go column H. So our quote number is QT triple D. Lovely. Now for this next part, we want to update our quote here. So if, it, if we have a quote, we want it to say quote, if it's in progress, quote, if it's an invoice or paid, then we want it to be an invoice. So actually we're going to look up column G, which is our status. So we're going to copy this formula that we've already made and we're going to get that to tell us what our status is. We copy all of that again and our status column is column G, wasn't it? Yes. So reference four was in progress. Number one is a quote. And then we've got invoice. What we want to do now is if it is a quote. So we're going to add an if formula. If it's a quote, tell me quote. So if all of that stuff that we've already said equals quote, then why not in capitals A? Give me a quote. Otherwise, if it's not a quote, I want it to be an invoice. So this is our if formula. So our check, if this equals this, then do this. Otherwise, do this. So if our status column, which is column G, is quote, say quote. Otherwise, tell me it's an invoice. So there we go. We've got a quote. If I go to number four, we've got an invoice. We've got a couple of other statuses here. We've got in progress and we've got paid. So I'm going to copy this whole if formula again. And it's going to say, if this is a quote, then give me a quote. Otherwise, if the status is in progress, I want you to say quote. 
So this whole section is a it's an otherwise if function. And then we mean to end the brackets there. So if we are a quote, quote, otherwise if it's in progress, quote, otherwise give me an invoice and that will capture if it's an invoice or whether it's paid. So we've got a quote here and this will be our one click. So let's go a reference number four was currently a quote because it's in progress. If it's a quote, it's still a quote, but we've just gone to invoice, jobs complete. So now it's an invoice. So that is a quote to an invoice in one click, as I promised you. There's a few more things that we want to check. So first of all, let's have a little look. There's your quote. Let's go to the one which is an invoice. This is what our invoice looks like. Lovely. We've got a lot of space down here. So we probably want to fill this out with different information depending on whether it's a quote or an invoice. So let's add in some more lines down here. And what I want it to say is and additional details, terms as agreed, but I want to change whether it gives us our company information and our bank details like this, if it's an invoice. But if it's a quote, I want it to tell us this quote is valid for three months. If you'd like to discuss any aspects of the quote, here's an email address and I'm going to leave an info there to registration number and company number. So the only two lines that change are these two lines in the middle and I'll redo them so you can see what's happening. And we're going to do the same thing as we did up here where we're going to say, so if status is a quote, then say quote. If it says in progress, then blah, 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 blah. I'm going to copy all of this down here. And I'm going to say, if it's a quote, then I want to say this quote is valid for three months. And I'm going to say the same thing if it's in progress, one in capital letters. Otherwise, I want it to provide my bank details. So otherwise, please pay it into my bank account. It'd be lovely. This isn't my real bank account, by the way. If you, if you want to pay me some money, I'm more than happy to provide my bank details. My second line is to be if it's a quote or in progress. If you'd like to discuss any details, please uh, email me at sales at Bloomfield Analysis. And do the same thing here, copy paste. So it's a really long formula, but it's a lot of copying and pasting. So if you'd like to discuss any aspect of your quote, please email this. Otherwise, I want to tell people that the VAT amount is what's due to HM Revenue and Customs. I'm assuming you have a very similar thing in other countries. All right, so there you go, reference. One, this is a quote, so this is saying quotes valid for two months. And if you would like to discuss, please email me. I'm keeping my registration numbers here. However, if instead of a quote, we have an invoice. So let's change reference to, to an invoice. One click, here's our invoice. Then we're going to provide our bank details and tell them that the VAT is for the government. Let's have a look. There you go, it fits the page much more nicely. The only bit we haven't done is the items. That's because there's a few different ways of doing this items part. You can either just have one item which just reads from the database or two items if you're always going to have one or two items just reading from the database like here. But if you're going to have lots of different items, you can either have a drop down list with just one list of items or you could have like a double drop down list, which gives you a broader category and then a more detailed item. So if you just want the single drop down list, the video is do a single drop down list. My video for the kind of double drop down. If you've got loads of items, I think it's called at the moment the ultimate drop down, then that's the best video that you should watch in order to fill these in.
this was meant to just be a quick one on how to go from a quote to an invoice in one click. So hopefully it wasn't too long and it wasn't too short. Next, I'm thinking of doing either CRM. So what you'll be able to do is email everybody whose invoice is overdue with an email saying overdue invoice. Or I'm thinking of doing a food like shopping template one, which is something a bit different. So you put in your meal plan, what you want to eat for the week, and then it automatically creates your shopping list for you. So if you've got a preference on any of those, let me know. Put it in the comments, uh, subscribe so you can see any new videos coming up. And please share. Thanks. Bye.